scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. My passion for God and my sincere desire to see Him glorified. You've heard me say it and God knows my heart. I love God more than ministry. I love God more than money. I love God more than anointing. I don't use him for these things. Never have and never will. I rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him. I even love him more than the quest for his presence. This is where I believe many people miss it. Because primarily our motives are corrupted. God for us means many things. For other people, he's just a solution like a charm, like a genie that you use and invoke his name, invoke his blood, invoke his fire, invoke whatever to get results. You're not going to really host extraordinary results that way. Are we together? A genuine encounter with Jesus that births the fear of God in you, that births love for God and love for humanity. It's not enough to love God. You must love the people he has sent to you. And you must love the body. I love the body of Christ with all my heart. I am part of it. I'm proud to be part of it. I love the body of Christ. I may not agree with every perspective in the body of Christ. I may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective but it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of Christ I love the body of Christ regardless of man of God regardless of denomination regardless of exploits or setbacks I genuinely love the body of Christ now let me tell you when you get to this spiritual state when you can assume this posture you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance not outside of this condition the Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store, not for them that pray, not for them that seek him, for them that love him. When a man truly falls in love with God and is addicted with his presence, his life, everything about God becomes an obsession to you. His house, his life, his word, everything, your whole life is poured as a drink offering then you are ready to rise above any challenge. I'm telling you, challenges will come upon you. You will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Are we together? So we discussed that. And I said how that many believers, they may be born again, but they've not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. An encounter that is greater than any circumstance. You know, when people doubt God and turn and insult God to his face, over situations and circumstances Lord I prayed for, for tea you didn't give me tea, I prayed for bread you didn't give me bread, I prayed for CGPA, I prayed for a job you are not faithful and um, you know God if you don't do this I will backslide it's because you've not had an encounter the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter it's not counseling, the remedy is an encounter, there is a way that a man encounters God that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your life. Are we together? It's very important.
whether you bless me or not i'm in love with you to a point of addiction whether ministry rises or not it has no it it, it, it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you please i pray that as you listen to me this will become a reality that this will not just become a talk from a preacher you see when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom it will only take time time does not change anything but time is a revealer of motives time will reveal whether you genuinely love god or not the second thing we said that is the key and i'll pick up from here now that's where we left up last week is the power of mental transformation the second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life listen please to rise above the limitations that plague mankind to rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance a degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if christ tarries the power of mental transformation listen i said it it never it never tires me to communicate to god's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry in life in business in marriage in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and I told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways, basically. The first condition is a genetic programming. We are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits. I'm being very slow and being very detailed because I want us to get this. The second, which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming. Say environmental programming. We are programmed environmentally, which can be engineered by culture, past experiences, our levels of exposure, the environment that we grew up in. Chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up, you do not have a reference. You see, belief is based on a reference. Are we together? You cannot believe vaguely. There must be a reference, preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of god upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years passed but their impact um, were not as impactful as it is now of course I've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication a, communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened 
people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit i began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit god remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness they limited the holy one it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt god something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of um, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to cop to counsel an intending couple i'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions the first thing i want to examine is their passion for god and then the next thing i want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding what is your viewpoint about god what is your viewpoint about money what is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose what is your viewpoint about your personal life what is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and hope this does not just apply to the line of marriage it applies to everything there is something culture taught us about god there is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about god their experiences were their sermons they preached it with confidence we embraced it with sincerity and we are victims of their limitations are we together there's something that our past experiences have done i always give an example if it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message are we together because there is no template that represents favor in his life most of our families live from hand to mouth so every time we talk about prosperity our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them we have associated prosperity with negativism with fraud with with unseriousness with fetish demonic activities especially when young people are prosperous and you know let me tell you something after listening to a very powerful message after listening to a powerful series financial dominion the wealthy place the economic system of the kingdom you will think that your paradigm will change at once no it took a long time for it to be built it will take a repetition repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms you have to you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again that's why the bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the next word hearing there is understanding hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of god hallelujah proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart for as he thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will become it didn't say so he is becoming for as he thinketh in his heart so is he 
for as he thinketh in his heart it equates my physical reality to my life this is the difference hear me brothers and sisters between a ceo who is living in an office with an ac having secretaries and pas and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad a, 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 a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry how can i be working so hard and i'm receiving ten thousand per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving five hundred thousand and my answer to that frustration is what switch them switch them for only two weeks take the megad don't change anything don't give him any orientation keep him in that office and take the ceo to the gate let me tell you what will happen after two weeks people will stop going to the office the ceo will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there are we together his hospitality his open-heartedness his calmness his people skills and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there let's go to our man in the office i know what he will be doing drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are you are certainly not going to be here for a long time then he looks for what to steal he signs documents anyhow and then he crosses his leg watching tv changing channels enjoying the ac probably texting all the people and say my life has changed the place will be dirty i assure you he will not empty the waste bin he doesn't have that frame of excellence his paradigm of excellence is not that way he will destroy everything he will misplace documents scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately at the end of it he will be frustrated he will steal something sizable and run away that will be the end of that another popular example you wore a shirt for one year it was always clean and iron nobody knew it was one years old and you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt in one month he turned a white shirt to brown have you seen people like that yeah listen our physical environment is but a looking glass you never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things it's not even by trying to dress well and no 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 it's a culture you've got to change your mind so the bible says in philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus i was not born this way i re-engineered myself using the word of god and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise are we together you must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life hallelujah paradigms there are people who will use a water system toilet a very clean toilet and finish i mean in a house not even the one in the hostels a clean toilet they enter the bathroom they saw everything clean they use it and leave it there and just go out smiling and they tell you are finished they took their mindsets there their mindsets took them there are we together yeah there is something about excellence as obvious as it should be you must be trained to discern it don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed it is so that's the reason why the higher you rise the more you must have a greater capacity for patience because when your mindset changes you wonder sometimes i look at people and i am amazed the way they think certain things that should be so obvious you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions the power of paradigms are we together A man can come to you someone can come to a Jimmy for instance and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir 
if you were to be at my age, what will you advise me to do? Or if you will be at my level in life, what two things do you think I should focus on now? We never ask questions. Have you seen people who have access to great men? One guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. There are cultures, am I right? That train people. The moment they see you with some level of weight, they say, ah, this is, things are working. But you know that absolutely nothing is working. Paradigms. That's what informs people to live fake lives. There are people who, if God blesses with 50,000 now, their mindset tells them, look, you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong. So they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes, let me tell you something. When I meet people who are greater than me, I have no pressure to prove any point because I know I'm stupid when I'm doing it. But then you see a lot of people with their little understanding, small results here and there, they come and they never learn. They are trying to impress you. Hey, Jimmy, I'm a business person. I just read Robert Kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance. That act alone is a revelation of where you are. Because great people are silent. Let her works speak for her at the gates. And so when we're done, let me finish up my story. They were about to go. I was greeting them, you know. And then the gentleman just came to me and said, Sir, please, just one favor. I said, what is it? He said, let me snap with you. And I looked at him. I said, this, this boy is not wise. Honestly speaking. That's why we must crave for wisdom. I said, this, this guy is not smart one bit. I said, all right, that's okay. He snapped with me. About three hours later, my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on Facebook that me and my very good friend, Apostle Joshua Selman. Now, hold on. I'm not insulting him. He may even be listening now. Listen. Listen. Do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around Look, let me tell you. If a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close to him, something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place. If Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know. God knows. The devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing when you watch the picture. It, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations. Culture. Experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details. And um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life, as powerful as he is, if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me to work on you? There's nothing wrong with me. God says, all right. There, you have it. That's good. there is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. 
Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years. Maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago. I would have been 100 times without exaggeration higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out of me. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm. Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm. No matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three. To rising above recession. Key number three. To rising above any kind of limitation. Is the discovery and the development of your value and your abilities I'm going to dwell here there is a lot to talk about here the discovery and the development of your abilities your value I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance please listen to me a man's relevance is not based on chance it's not based on some kind of sentiments the disparity the, the stratification between the wealthy between the great the anointed the influential among many other reasons primarily is their value write this down please your value is a representation of your worth your value is a representation of your worth w-o-r-d your value is a representation of your worth based on the solutions you provide the problems you solve and the lives you transform your value is a representation of your worth Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We are not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide on the strength of the problems that you solve and on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform put it in another way if you are not providing any kind of solution if you are not solving any kind of problem and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people, you are not valuable. And hear me please. Relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system. We've said it again and again. Let me just do a recap on it. I'll touch a bit into that. Right? You can get the message the wealthy place. Write this down. This is the fundamental law. That governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom our rewards in life and that reward can be financial the sense of security the sense of honor that we receive whatever it is our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one 
the demand or the need for what we do number one the demand or the need for what we do number two our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us my relevance in life my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God the demand for what I do my ability to do what I do and the difficulty in replacing me let me tell you when you understand this you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now this is why pastors are wealthy listen pastors think they are wealthy I was teaching the school of ministry uh, school of ministry students and I said many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God that's not the reason why people are wealthy it's based on a law if I am blessed today among other reasons is based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me which is on the strength of what I do my proficiency in doing it are we together a man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick a man of God is rich because he's providing solutions his solution may be supernatural in origin the solution may be spiritual when you connect people to Jesus Christ you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men and the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value whether given for free or sold a reward must come to you a reward must come to you the laws are inflexible you cannot change them so for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival to bring miracles signs and wonders I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors let me tell you why that is powerful much more than business it is an intrinsic value value that is not dependent on any external environment and value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors so one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value don't say i am poor don't say i am mediocre what value are you bringing to the table of destiny call this stage the table of greatness there are enough seats for everyone but your past is your value your past is your value not just any value values that are needed and useful values that are needed and useful applicable to the predicament of your generation God is helping someone. Are we together? What have you brought to the table of greatness? That author, you, you know, listen, listen. Do you know why they call people thieves and frown? Because you see rewards, but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward. That's why we hate armed robbers. An armed robber brings a gun and says give me your one million and you tell him what is the value he said i have no value but i have a gun to threaten you so it is bad but that same one million you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it listen you don't sit down and wish to rise you grow in value to the level that matches what you desire so Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value someone can bless him with 10 million whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him what is the difference their value your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability
there are two dimensions to value i want to talk a bit about value number one is intrinsic value write it down intrinsic or inherent value value that came with you it was a gift from god to you part of your packaging and part of your wiring it can be improved upon hallelujah are we blessed this night i really want to challenge you look at me please please do not trivialize what i'm teaching you god is not a herbalist this is the key that lifts men above recession i was talking to one of our ladies she works in the bank and um, i was talking to her this morning and i told her i said how is it going in the bank and she said kai things are, are really bad for many people though but she said there are some i said that's right in my mind i said that's me you are now talking about me he said there are some their lives have increased and multiplied do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective there was famine in samaria minus the king minus the king number two minus elijah all the people elijah never said please even elijah begged for bread elijah did not beg for bread in samaria he came gallantly and saw people eating their children the other one said we ate my child yesterday we said let's boil this other child and the woman refused are we together prophet we boiled my child yesterday when I was eating my child, we ate together. Now is the turn to eat her own child and they refused. And the prophet said no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? open up the doors will you open up the gates open up the doors listen believe me brothers and sisters when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things Sunday Adelaja 96% of his membership in a communist nation right ukraine a communist nation 96 percent of its members are white in a communist nation value the key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people this is what a lot of pastors go through this is what a lot of business people go through this is what a lot of individuals go through they think the key is resentment and anger and hatred no the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value a student comes in backtrack five years six years a naive young person probably in his teenage comes into an institution i want to study medicine not even having an idea of what he wants to do are we together or the implication and he goes through five six probably seven years of rigorous training they never change his skin they never change his clothes they only change his mind and after six seven years a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value i am surprised when many people say why am i poor what kind of question is that why am i poor why am i suffering the recession and I mean no disrespect as I communicate this. Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says everybody 
go and hold someone whose life you changed if you can hold five people you receive a million dollars some of us will roam to everybody you touch somebody you say i'll slap you you've not added any value to my life why why do you want to hold me i have never been blessed not by your wisdom not by your spiritual life not by your anointing not by your academics nothing about you has changed me but there are others there will not be enough room everybody says he changed me you changed me you blessed me you advised me my business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me that sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life the power of your secret place changed my life you preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me problem solved solutions provided lives transformed and there is a reward waiting for you i guarantee you no witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has worked upon his value what is my value what is my gift what is that ability that can bail me out let me tell you something and I'm, I'm a Nigerian I want to say something that is very serious right now I'm a Nigerian I love Nigeria I love everyone in this country we are brothers and sisters are we together but listen do you know why I want to be sincere with you do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now I know many people think he's Buhari others think he's Jonathan other people think he's PDP APC I'm not a politician are you together let me tell you something about the nose diving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people we only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years the same way to happen to your destiny i mean a, a department they give everybody food free of charge so i think let me tell you you do not generalize impact and success you must be sure what part you are contributing otherwise you'll be ashamed with time we are worship team we are all great but in all sincerity what is your unique contribution one day you hold the mic alone and on that day we know that you are the one limiting the worship team on that day we know ah so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you we have been managing it but right now we are a group of intelligent lecturers we are all intelligent people the day you have to do a presentation as a person life must single you out one day to defend yourself i belong to an anointed ministry great and wonderful we are shaking the world i agree with you a day will come you will stand before the sick apostle i'm not there hey Jimmy, i'm not there my head of department prayer ushering, oh, decoration they are all not there on that day that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise life will challenge you life will test it and until you are able to prove it the disciples kept enjoying corporate success until one day when jesus climbed up the mount of transfiguration they were happy they brought an epileptic person they said don't worry about jesus we are here just keep him down they struggled they were embarrassed nothing happened let me tell you do you know what causes jealousy the ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about you've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons no this person cannot be sick then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for before the opening prayer he is healed and then the person testifies exactly as it happened you know how people testify they will say it the way it happened may god make you to be to develop an appetite to be valuable an appetite to be valuable let me tell you how you know you are really valuable when no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver you are exceptionally valuable listen listen I can't remember how much this is how much they bought it but let's assume this is 300,000 just an assumption right assume that this pulpit is 300,000 
when they call the price what do you do you look at it the material the quality and he says okay if they look at this and say bring 10 million you look at it and say no that's the same way they rate you so you say 20,000 they say you are telling the truth then you say 100,000 they say for where is money free like that but there are others they don't even say anything their value says any amount priceless 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 and so someone brings 10 million and says sir please don't be offended it's a privilege for me to do this may you be such a person may you be such a person hallelujah Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have in fact to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again the Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said no 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 no. we are going to come in now he's not only ministering in Lagos he's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade again say value when Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is invited, uh, inviting him, he is received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's strolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My, my desire is that under God myself and this great ministry will be so valuable this place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now the protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around why because every week groups are coming individuals are coming from all over the nation it's called value if we remain at this level we will never rise but if we keep rising by the spirit of God and true determination a time will come somebody will come from another state another nation and say it's a privilege finally are you that valuable are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life are you so valuable I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart then you will know why certain the money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud wanting something for nothing is wickedness now let me tell you how many of us approach it oh god will you keep looking at me like this and god says i've been looking i set laws and i put preachers he said let them come back to to life remember the prayer of 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 who the rich man let them come back to life he said no they have the prophets and the law if they will not listen to them even if somebody comes back to the dead they will not listen just like there are people God has anointed but many people will not listen why should you fail in life your background who told you it's because of your background there are people today with no arms but they are valuable there are people with no legs they are valuable there are people with no eyes they are valuable there are people who cannot speak they are valuable we don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God he's really valuable it's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man can determine his lot in life. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. 
Hallelujah. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me if, there's, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me to fix it. And um, I was going to drop him and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It end you the right here. When we stop, uh, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in a filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the filling station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Haba. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me, then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended. My friend, we used to eat together. But you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so, 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 so organization. Please, let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. Value. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only... There are people... That's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potential is not at work. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you called into? I'm called into the music ministry. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Listen. Can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me 
because of the grace I carry. Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key, and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, Really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing, but vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, Why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the your competitors just by looking at them you see the flawlessness of their preparation and just the preliminary screening you are back home and they say no in nigeria this is because this person is yoruba that's why they didn't take me no sir you are not good be honest with yourself is i'm not saying you cannot be good listen value is only valuable when competence is added to it value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it yesterday i was studying on diamonds i just decided to study on diamonds i didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds different kinds and i was seeing the diamonds and the the rigor in finding them and i mean their structure the the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable Are you competent? Are you competent? Seest thou a man diligent in his ministry, diligent in his business? It's only a matter of time. You may be soaking Gary now, but diligence is like a plane, it will lift you beyond the limitations. It can be raining, and you just take a flight, and within one minute, you are already out of that rain. You are not even aware that it's raining again until you land koinonia i'm challenging you i will be a wicked preacher i will be a wicked man of god to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what i'm doing with my life and by the grace of god and in all sincerity that's what has brought me where i am and i told you where i am now is my preparation of yesterday tomorrow will reveal to you what i'm doing today value always precedes manifestation so when you see a man manifest that's not his true state it is his passive state based on your seeing him now in business in ministry there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works and they may never find out there are many people who don't know how this thing works i'm sorry to say but look at zari as a case study almost every business in zaria almost not all but almost every business in zaria is tainted by mediocrity smallness average there's there's nothing world class there's there's no touch of excellence in it we are limited because of our culture i have my small shop this is nice we never learn someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you then you make it again no you must learn from other people's mistakes Are we together? I have hardly seen things in this city, and I say it with all humility, that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute. From our hotels, are we together? To our restaurant services, in fact, from the most part, they are terrible. Yet there are many of us seated here. If I ask you now, what did you say? I've been cooking. You are the only one who has not eaten. The fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. A means wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her at the gates. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, 
if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Competence. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now, you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I may see you. I said it, I think it was to the school of ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they are not really my friends, but they are ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, at your level, there are some bishops who are not like you. You should be on TV and radio. I said, I hear. So that I will get to a point where I'm limited and I have to beg for partners. Isaiah 77, give me Isaiah 61, give me 61 naira or 610 naira. I don't want to do all those things. I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day Koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problem solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, Koinonia, and all those following. Not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is irrecoverable this year, more than any year put together. Now, please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting. I'm only challenging you in a time we call recession. Say something I do not know. Say it again. Something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation. One of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services, and he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report, I said, nobody, it trek from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program. Any time this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry. At any time, whether it was planned or not. Brothers and sisters, there is something that is being done. This is where I'm taking you to. It was not like that. Our first crusade, they were almost locking me because of 150,000. Aaron, whereas the money that is circulating now was still there. I have learned through pain. I have learned through mistakes. I've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free. I pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. You are not preparing your way. There can't be greatness. Don't be too quick to show forth. Prepare. 
everybody say prepare prophesy to yourself say myself prepare myself be competent myself work on yourself hallelujah prepare don't make noise don't take this colleague mentality moving around i used to know you pastor femi we are fellow pastors colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people oh we were classmates the same class the same university the same this the, we are both doctors we are both professors no 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 the bible says one star different from another in glory say in the name of jesus there is a, an ability say there is a gift within me that is greater than zaria greater than nigeria there is an intrinsic value within me that can bless me that can bless the kingdom and i will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there i'll give you an example intellectual property is an intrinsic value you don't refrigerate it you don't warm it you don't keep it in a safe in a bank is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to work first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic Portacourt, lagos and so on and so forth and you look at the person who is talking you ask him sir what do you know about real estate? Say, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it. He gave me, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry yet they want me to buy their album no i told you last week there are many people who claim they can cook they have restaurants are we together and you start bullying people and say ah shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant i saw you the other day ella you should come to my restaurant to eat are we not fellow koinonia people she wants to be healthy she wants to be healthy and as far as it is concerned you have not worked on yourself One of our school of ministry ladies, uh, um, she made one beautiful work, just a beautiful artwork. The students saw it. I mean, she's here. Very fantastic artwork. And when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value. Monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent. Then you place a price on it. Are we together? Now, I want everybody to write. Write three things you know God has put in you that must be developed and deployed. Please write it down. Young, old, write it down. Type it, write, do whatever it is. Please write it down. Don't flatter yourself. Don't write what you don't have. Just patiently think and you'll find your own. Don't just write because your neighbor wrote something. 
Value. Value. Aaron is here. He handles most of the logistics of the you know people around different kinds of logistics. Why? Because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself. The other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his uh, just a little like dining or thereabout and his little office that he has and I saw him writing goals. I saw targets. I saw plans of action. I said this is excellent. This person is going to go far. Please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward. That you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you. It must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity, communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing. Hallelujah. I met a pastor and the pastor told me something. He said, man of God, if you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you're going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? He says, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. But not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There were there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempted. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money, somebody would have acknowledged the fact that. God is using you to bless him. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace right like revelation the capacity utterance but then it also amplifies something within you that is there like creativity like leadership like your gift so number one your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transformed beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. 
greatness wealth any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system it's not just the issue of the will of god the issue of the will of god as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery it is clear in the word i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you there is always a part you have to play there is a part that i have to play huh joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life are we together give me five ten minutes let me talk a little let me take point three a little more write this down please i know that i've taught a lot about finances but let me just talk for five ten minutes on a few things about our financial life number one let me tell you something a job alone will limit you i want to i want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit a job alone will limit you brothers and sisters no matter how much of a job you get no matter how great of a job you get a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment your needs are plenty family needs the average african family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance it's capital intensive to live in nigeria to send children to school almost all of us here by the time you are a christian and you are born again you have commitments to your church to your group to your ministry and part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life you will be in trouble you will have to be in trouble you cannot be earning fifty thousand naira probably a hundred thousand and believe that that in itself you remove tight you remove a lot of things it is just not enough that's the challenge with our parents hundred thousand was enough when they had one child now they had they have five children but their finances have not increased so it's pinning them and straining them to death are we together what then is the solution activate other streams of income 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 don't sit down running around and say there's no job and i don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time your energy your money and then at the end nothing comes out from it activate streams of income work on your mindset monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed you will rise above recession i tell you are we together did you know for instance did you know for instance every week we rent chairs in the dozens during the miracle service we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens that's someone's business are we together that's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire 
if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it. Just, I mean just koinonia alone. Please activate streams of income. Take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard. You are, you are insincere and you are ungodly when you whet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer. Don't be that insincere. Make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough. Then you can open up your hands for value. Don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense. No, don't do that. If you know you cannot work on it, package yourself. Work on yourself. I work on myself every day. I returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as I was. I made sure that my daily goals were met. Please, don't you think that it is just the anointing. The anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. Paul said, I thank my, he says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than ye all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week. It takes time. It takes research. It takes staying in the spirit. There are other aspects of my life I am involved in. What are you doing? There is no laziness. Don't sit down and say, oh God, when will you change my, my situation? Don't sit down and say, who will come and marry me out of this problem? Nobody. At least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say, which lady? The Bible says, he that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed there, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them a place that was previously very quiet and conservative now you see the people early in the morning the engine is up and they are grinding sometimes till late in the night and they are making money from it please i want you to go back and sit down and be sincere with yourself young and old sit down and say i now see why things are not working in my life i now see why i'm feeling the heat of the recession I am not saying you should be a money monger. Remember, we've done financial dominion. So you cannot sit and say now, which business do I do? Uh -uh. That's a wrong question. How do I develop myself to rise to a point of value? When you are valuable, then now you build a system around that value. That's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful, and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give. Very simple. But it's not as simple as it sounds. The last point. Rise to a point of value. Rise to a point of value. The last point. What is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant? The fourth key to rising beyond recession. We name the series Thrive. To thrive does not mean to manage. The thrive, to thrive means to blossom. Thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out. You see how a plant grows out of the soil. And you see it moving regardless of, of the strength of the soil. It shoots through it and it blossoms. That's what it means to thrive. You don't thrive if there are no obstacles. You thrive in spite of obstacles. The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing. Shabarato. 
Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Sing it one more time, everybody. Anointing fall on me. Anointing. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost. I love what I'm about to share with you. I'm telling you, because it's something that has changed my life. You you see you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, them. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh oh oh. anointing write this down let me give you a few definitions about the anointing the down the anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent him in your territory the anointing is God's seal of authorization is his authorization upon an individual to represent him the authorization for legislature the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth the anointing Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3, how terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number three. Now I love this definition. The anointing is an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this. Experience possibilities. It's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe. We've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there, there are limitless possibilities in God. And those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction, the grace of God is at work upon the life of an individual. The Bible is a compendium. An unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God. 
revealed from generation to generation hallelujah i got a testimony recently and um, i'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so i can share it in the open when we went to yola for the last crusade a few months i think a month or two ago we went to yola one of the person who was driving me around is a doctor phd you know with his wife he's been married and they've, they've been i mean no child this thing has not worked for them and he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed you know it's been a while they've been married they're probably following now and his wife couldn't take in and you know when they were done we're about to leave i asked him i said what would you want the lord to do and then prayed for them and he sent me a text i think he was on our way to bauchi now on our cookie no no bauchi was on our way to bauchi i just got a text he said apostle the text is still on my phone he said i called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital and they said i think she's three or a month pregnant say results shout it listen results are evidences that god is alive not just an evidence that a man is anointed it's much more than that it's much more than that it's much more than that during our dinner we'll be playing some videos i hope that the media would consider that i don't know what their plans are but i hope that they should incorporate that and one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations and some of you will marvel and wonder marvel and wonder at the hand of god and what he can do when a man is anointed i've said it and i will say it again and again the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something i have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of joshua selman take the anointing out of my life and i'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but is your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um, leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and i was listening to some speakers and while they were talking i said my god these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over 
In 2 Kings chapter 4, the wife of the son of the prophet went to Elisha. And Elisha said, what do I need to do to you? What is, what is wrong? What is the problem? And she said, you know, this and that, there is this situation. And then he says, what do you have in your house? And she said, nothing. Thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil. And he said, that's it. He said, go and borrow vessels, verse 3. Go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. He said, borrow not a few. Borrow not a few. If you increase capacity, every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it. If I pour this water on the cover, listen. If I pour this water on the cover, the cover will limit the water. This makes this water look as though it is triangular. Pour it in a plate, the plate will become like that. Thank you. Are we together? The anointing. And then when she got it, he now told her, he said, go and close the door. When the prophet was talking, the anointing is a living thing. It was hearing. It was hearing the discussion. And the moment she did that, she began to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply. Listen, it's not enough to be anointed. You must be anointed at a level that can command notable results. It's not enough to be anointed. The anointing is like currency. The anointing is like currency. 100 naira can buy sweet, but 100 naira cannot buy shoe. But it is still money. So don't say I'm anointed. The Bible says, Acts chapter 10, right? When Paul was speaking in the house of Cornelius, the salvation of the Jews, in verse 38, he said, How God anointed. Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus. So it's not just that Jesus was anointed. Look at the extent. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then the Bible says on the strength of that anointing, he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil. Why? For God was with him. The anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll. No. Those are just effects of the anointing on the human body. And then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation. But the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking. Results. Results. I don't care whether you shake like a leaf. Results, brothers and sisters. I just want to praise you. I lift my hands to say I love you. You are everything to me and I exalt your Jesus are you the Messiah is it true that the anointing is on you and Jesus said all right watch this the blind eyes open the deaf ears hear and he said go back and tell John how do you know a man who is anointed results results don't trivialize results it's not all about the results are you joking what then is it about results lives changed results hallelujah when there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that it's the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets, no CS. How do you explain that? Results. Are we together? 
result. A whole family almost ravaged with HIV. That cause and it's not by sleeping around and just one prayer and everyone is healed. Not just one person. It's called result. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. You may be criticized, but you will never be ignored. Once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man, upon the life of a business, Satan will raise criticisms. Why? So that your word will not be heard. So that you will not be believed. And so that people will not be blessed. But here's what the Bible says. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The truth was buried only for three days. After three days, it came back to life. Results. Results. Notable results. Not just results. It says the spirit of the Lord. Please give us Isaiah 61. The messianic prophecy. It was a prophecy about Jesus Christ. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says. For he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted, to set the captives free. Are we together? And then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives. And all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God. And all of that to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. And then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. That's what the anointing does. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for the garment of praise right oh, I'm, I'm, the oil of joy for money the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he through them might be glorified that they may be called oaks of righteousness brothers and sisters when a man comes to a ministry wretched terrible not born again and something happens to him it's called the anointing you get born again you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Your life is transformed. Your mindset is changed. You become a leader. You become an ambassador of the kingdom. Then you are now anointed again to reproduce say, The anointing. There is nothing one of our core values as you know in this ministry is the anointing. We believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time. Absolutely. So you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band. Because everything is done with respect to the anointing. They believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics. They are spirit and life. Are we together? Listen. Please hear me. I do not boast to have risen so far. Compared to where I need to go, I am just starting. But I can tell you this. I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gifts and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching someone will not just hear and say wow this was nice honestly when you see me talk like this I talk from my heart because this is it you know sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is but when someone who has found it says look this is what you are looking for don't go around and waste your time and come back and say ah, ah I didn't know it was like this hallelujah Holy Spirit you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Make sure you talk to him while praying.
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, we wait on you, Lord, we wait on you, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Please pray, please pray, those outside, you can come in, clear the way for them so they can come. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait on you. Spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Shabarataya. Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. This is my prayer, Lord. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place.
to mean business with your destiny ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny don't worry about the rain there are people who will direct you strategically don't be distracted Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Father, I declare that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. listen to me the quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation not every information is needed and useful for your destiny the fact that you are getting informations does not mean you are growing the fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising the information you are getting must be needed and useful it must be needed and useful I like you to pray and say Lord the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny lift your voice and pray the right knowledge the right information the right knowledge the right information hallelujah hallelujah it's raining but we're still praying hallelujah 
apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you are in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life that should bless my world? Reveal it, reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord my gift Lord the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost there is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We're praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellency of power may be of God and not of man. I'd like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says your gates shall be continually open. They will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen. I want you to lift your voice and cry and say all those who have been ordained to honor my gift, I call them 
to my life lift your voice and pray please be serious everyone in every territory called ordained anointed everyone called to honor your gift your business acumen your intellectual capacity your education your skill everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry call them forth by the power of the prophetic by the power of the prophetic I call them, I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. I call them into my life. I call them into my destiny. In the name of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be open. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I like us to pray. I like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil, there is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Pray. Upon my marriage, a superior unction, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored, an unction that cannot be ignored. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. 
stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions testimonies beyond imagination you can pray it through genuine desire a heart that is thirsty thou son of David have mercy on me thou son of David anoint me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me affect my life breathe on me I look to you for life affect my life breathe on me I'll take my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you We are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there I like you to pray and say I challenge limitations you are a spirit and I speak to you this season you are living. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord upon Koinonia. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism, it's influence. The key, and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, access to kings, access to nobles, access to kings, 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 access to kings,
access to men of influence access to custodians of systems hallelujah hallelujah one of the blessings and the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access unusual influence God has given us access to politicians access to governmental figures access to kings access to financial people access to mentors access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success one of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time read your bible and see what god did with time when it was time to visit people he made the sun to stand still he made the sun to go backward are we together he did something to time when you lose time you have lost everything believe in the lord your god number two please let's go back to um, second chronicles he said believe in his prophets listen carefully his prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies his prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake that means someone who is real that's not what he's talking about he said believe his prophets so shall ye prosper to prosper means to do well he says believe his prophets his prophets are not just people who prophesy his prophets are not just real men of god <clears throat> listen carefully this is where we miss it you must learn this his prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of god it has nothing to do with maybe someone being real his prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going i'm going to meet other people who have problems so i meet a gentleman who has problem and i just greet him how are you where is the house of the widow of zarephath he's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because i'm not sent to him i'm a prophet i probably met other widows elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said oh dear you mean it you mean this how your life is sorry eh and he kept going the same way jesus saw 10 lepers the same way jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go there is a man sent to you there is an anointing sent to you listen I know that many people will not like me for what I'm telling you not every anointing can bless you generally speaking by opening your heart I mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what I'm telling you and then God will bless you there is an anointing a portion there is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sent to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarephath elijah was looking for just one haba prophet 
what of other women i love them i can pray i can intercede may god bless you do a b and c but i'm looking for a woman of zarafan where is she finally you find her and his clear she's not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say i spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing i'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the, as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just, this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say, the most important thing is God. Yes, you are right, but you are wrong. The most anointing is anointing. What is there? What is so special about this man of God? This is what I'm teaching you now. People are sent to people. Even the word of God is sent. He sent his word like a messenger. Meaning until that word is sent, you can stay there. But when the word comes like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. Sent. 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 The word that changes my life. Sent. I have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets. And my God, did my life change. Tonight, let me tell you. If you can believe. This, he said, believe his prophets. I know you are a businessman. I know you are educated. I know you are smart. But there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the result you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Write this down, please. His prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you. You must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus 
you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan wash seven times naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and the small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians he says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, look up please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. That means, I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately. Readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. 
must believe. One word from God can turn your life around. One prophetic word can turn your life around. All these strange spirits that oppress people, they don't just go because they are told to go. No. It takes the anointing. I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were, were coming down here and I told him, I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said, I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone, not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now? In this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was, uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh-huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon like a shield, I use it for defense. And the Bible says one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. 
But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He said it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency. Anything that moves is a living thing. And that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it. You are only seeing the body. Where is the spirit that moves it? That's why it can enter a house. You didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself. It can enter your account and still go out. Because it's warfare. The Bible says, believe is prophet. There is something they can do that can do something to the many things, including this. This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are. You can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you. It will, you know it's going. It's going out of your life. It just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons, prosperity is warfare. It's not just about money to buy car and houses. Money is a defense. It can defend the gospel. It can defend a man. And the Bible says all those weapons, they are not carnal. So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and I watch and many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify Yes, it's true. What suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say, we're sending you to US to get a job. Hapa, my brothers and my sisters, I've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who I need. Whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal. That you are sitting and someone says, I'm thinking of you. Who do you think you are? No. I want to help you. 
I want to bless you. You step into prepared blessings. Blessings that you are assured. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. And Jesus looked at them. You know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net. Then you quickly pull it in the morning. That's how you were trained. But let me show you another technology. Cast your net to the right side. Master, but we only have left and right. <clears throat> this one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. One plus one is two. But one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment. Say, Satan, go away. I'm before the presence of God. Tomorrow is too far. God can. How many minutes does it take to do a transfer? I believe him yes I do I believe him I believe him I believe him I believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight go ahead Lord I believe you for this I believe you for that Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, 
it says make your request known don't assume it is known make your request known lord i'm here tonight because i want you to turn the situation of my family around lord there is a death sentence over my family and you have to arise for me tonight lord there is a death sentence over my life lord i've been delayed 10 years of my life i am backward 10 years there has to be a way you restore me oh god Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life something has happened to the glory upon my destiny i'm here tonight oh god turn my life around turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turn around oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear. Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness 
that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you Jesus Christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire I brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it lift your voice and pray every let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. 
it's not just you alone it's coming on you for the sake of your family let the chains be broken i release speed speed in one month in one month i'm prophesying that in one month what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of jesus christ speed now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit evil spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken spirit of victory cover us with your wings Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around into surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give you a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. He's leaving my hands. And is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman. But the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from my degree. What is this? CV and your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay, 
sometimes this time 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 just affects you but i'm praying right now and i'm seeing letters and i'm seeing on the letter congratulations listen and i'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough listen let me tell you except god is not god if this anointing that i'm seeing touches you then you and your family must stand here and testify i'm stretching my hands right now lord you are showing me this in the name of jesus this is a symbol of breakthrough i stretch my hands every family and every person that must receive of this grace i'm stretching my hands now you must testify i release upon you that grace you must testify i declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion i command it i declare it i decree it. in the name of jesus i command it i decree it i declare it right now in the mighty name of jesus christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of jesus christ i stretch my hands right now and i declare it's time for your family to rise i'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and i decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family i command that is gone now in the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ Sarking al janna ya bone na ka bone na ka sujada ne na ka sarkin salama sarjan al janna the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny. Right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life, of your, is your dad? Where did he come from? From high in the air. From where? High in From high in the air. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, in the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir, I decree and declare a restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life, huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married, but we're divorced. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now? Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. 
you are a nice lady but people continue to misunderstand you yes, sir. Yes, good sir. things and people look at you in the eye of many people now you are you are a devil you are a terrible lady yes, but it's sir. not true yes. you have a very beautiful heart this is what happens when do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people a ministry can be under this captivity no matter the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you are a wonderful lady Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do i'm working in a security uh, you are a security yes sir. did you go to school yes sir. i'm running my master you are running your masters yes, sir. my dear do you believe god can change your life yes, now sir. i believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them you see that to appoint this one is a prophet's reward it's not just that god is saying do this there is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward the possibilities that accompany an office i declare in the name of the god of heaven whom i represent may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you listen I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny. I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of Job. Are we together? Nonsense Job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church. Your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again. In the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat, 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you didn't write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand those who are in here you are trusting god to touch you to touch your family members you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now please quickly quickly let's do that very quickly while we are doing that please if you have written your prayer request i want you to wave it and ushers you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly let's let's have ushers if the ushers are not in our pr department you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please, for those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1 Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2 please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
is coming. Heaven touches earth in this place. In this place. Oppression is lifted. Shackles are breaking. Heaven touches earth in this place. That's what 
Stretch your hands, we are praying on this request. Shalabaka ruta sabre digete kata baladaba. Nataka parakato shada brede gete belede bos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ha shalagata brada gata parakato sada brede gete. In the cross asia saha sabarakato shabre gata baladaba. Rakata branda gata baladabos. E pratos kada brandi gete baladabos. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you. These prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise. For there is nothing impossible with you. 
We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths will be canceled by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life i declare by the hand of god almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of jesus christ what you cannot do for yourself i ask my god to do it for you in this season If you are a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah 
I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of jesus i declare i call them by the spirit and i command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus' name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, 
from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you're moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that fake cool is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.